the winner of the 2013 Victorian Business Innovation Award is Leanne Raven. Good evening, everyone. Look, thank you so much, and thank you to Telstra. You know, I thought, seeing this as an innovation category, that I should actually do something innovative in my speech. <laughs> and I racked my brain. And uh, just recently, there was a young American celebrity who gave an, a, a thank you speech at an awards ceremony. And it was a little bit like a tweet. And uh, it's the first tweet accepted speech that I've ever heard. And she actually just got up on the stage <laughs> and she said, thank you. And then she paused and then she said, I must leave now. And she walked off. <laughs> and I thought, oh, I'd really like to do that because I'm going to be so nervous <laughs> that that might help me with my nerves. But uh, I'm not going to do that because I've got too much to say to you. <laughs> and, uh, but I do promise to keep it short. Um, to be given this award in business innovation is an absolute thrill for me. Uh, my whole career has been in not-for-profit organisations and often this sector is viewed as second class in, in relation to commercial enterprises, when in fact the exact opposite is true. In a recent Productivity Commission it, uh, review, it was reported that there are some 600,000 not-for-profits operating in Australia and over three quarters of these are very small but the not-for-profit sector contributes 3.3 to 4.1 per cent of GDP uh, without including the contribution of volunteers, which would add a further 14.6 billion to GDP annually. So, you know, it's not that small. It's a great sector. I'm very happy to be in it. In that sector, I have held directorships on 10 not-for-profit boards operating in the health, disability, child care and research sectors, and I'm currently involved with five organisations, with annual incomes from 500,000 to 15 million per annum. I'm chairman of two, director of two, and CEO of one national health promotion charity called Sids and Kids Australia. And anyone involved in the not-for-profit enterprises at a strategic level quickly learns that, you know, this loving, sharing, caring, labelling of the sector is generally not accurate and you know that you're actually your business brain you have to put your business brain on and there are lots of challenges and I can see you know there's sort of a few nods around the room because you know those who haven't experienced it often have a different view for example a friend of mine recently who cycled for his favorite charity and raised his target of 50k said to me, you know, I'm, he's got a commercial background, he's worked for international consultancy companies all around the world. And he said, you know, I'm getting a little bit bored with my job. And I said, oh, I said, well, have you ever thought about working in the not-for-profit sector? And he said, oh, Leanne, I'm too much of an asshole to do that sort of work. <laughs> and <laughs> really, I mean, it, it just came as no surprise. But, you know, it's that, you know, I said, you might be actually challenged, you know. Um, and he agreed to, you know, the notion that he might be, but I don't think the drop in salary would have been particularly appealing to him, so he moved on. But, you know, the challenge in the not-for-profit sector is about innovation, and this is what makes me, as a person, really happy. Um, whether it's innovation in services or innovation out of necessity, um, at the Eastern Melbourne Medicare Local, where I am chairman, we do some fabulous work around mental health services for the community. We employ 24 credentialed mental health nurses who go out into the community and bring people back to the health sector, back to seeing their general practitioners and, and back to getting their health needs sorted. We also have an eating disorder clinic, which is the first in Australia. It's called PEACH positive eating and changing habits. Really exciting stuff. Um, in the disability sector, where I have a particular interest, there's a real lack of services. Um, lots of social workers talk about, you know, the options that you have um, in that sector for services to, to care, but, 
You know, many parents of people with special needs and carers often find that their only option is to actually not work and to look after their child who has special needs. And I don't think that's right. So at Sids and Kids Australia, which is my main job, um, we receive less than 5% of total revenue from the government. And we've had to innovate to survive and to continue to support our national public health program, which is called Sleep Safe by Baby, and our bereavement services. I don't know if you know very much about SIDS and Kids Australia, but when I first took up my role, we were actually watching our cash flow daily, that was about seven years ago, and drawing deeply on an overdraft to fund our programs. We've turned that around, we've done lots of things that have helped us to do that. Um, and, you know, some of those involved innovation, particularly in innovating funding streams, such as the government funding, but also we have an online charity shop, which was actually one of the first that was around, and we've developed lots of innovative business partnerships. We've still got lots of issues to tackle to achieve our purpose, but, and we've actually questioned our ability to continue to provide our services but we know the community impact of the sudden loss of a baby or a child is huge. And even Mia mentioned that tonight in her speech. And the fact that you know we operate at Sids and Kids in a niche market, no competitors, um, and there's about 3,000 families every year who experience the sudden and unexpected death of a baby or child. And at Sids and Kids, we receive about 1,300 new referrals. So we really need to continue to do that the other thing I wanted to mention is that we support parents who um, experience stillbirth, who may experience SIDS during infancy, or accidental deaths, um, such as drownings, road trauma, and all those sorts of things as well. Um, I once had somebody tell me that I could actually sell fridges to Eskimos if I really tried. And I don't know whether that was a compliment or a criticism. <laughs> I still don't know. Um, but whatever it is, that ability to do that and to bring into being good ideas that are novel is about social entrepreneurship and that's what excites me. That's my passion. I have to thank very quickly Krista Michaels, who's the CEO of Eastern Melbourne Medicare Local. She's a wonderful young CEO and she actually nominated me. And I, I just have had a fabulous journey so far. It's taken me into thinking about things very differently. I used to talk about mentors in my life. I now talk about champions because I really do realise there have been champions, people who've opened doors, supported me uh, at every stage. I'm truly honoured to receive the Victorian Business Innovation Award by Telstra Business Women's Awards and conclude in saying, I've always wanted to make a difference in people's lives and believe that innovation and surrounding myself with talented people who will tell me what, when I've got it wrong, are critical to getting it right. Thank you very much.